The psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. The word of God cleanses us from sin. The Bible says, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed to the word of God. The, but the word of God causes us to grow. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God, that we may grow thereby, the Bible says. The word of God causes us to grow in faith. For the Bible says, faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Also, God uses his word to instruct us and teach us in the ways of God and in doctrine. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We're going to take a look at it. We're going to take a look at what Paul says there in um, Matthew, in um, Ephesians chapter 5. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ hath loved us and hath given himself for us for an offering, a sacrifice, for a sweet smelling Saviour. But it says, But fornication, uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become of saints. Now that does not mean to say we cannot use the word fornication. I've just used it. Paul used it, invited it, invited it. It doesn't mean we cannot name the word and say adultery. What it means is it should not be said about us that we are a fornicator, that we are an adulterer. We should not have that name upon us. We should be walking in holiness. And holiness is not an option. As he which, as he which we are to be holy as he is holy. We are to be holy in all manner of conversation. We are saved from sin. We are not saved to sin. And uh, this idea that some people say that, well, now I'm saved, I can do anything I like. Well, the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches the opposite of that. When you are saved, you don't do what you like. A truly saved person will do what God likes, not what he likes. He will, he will walk in the spirit and he will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. He said, but fornication and uncleanness and convictors, let it not be named once, let it not be once named among you as become of saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, using idle words, talking a lot and saying nothing, nor jesting. That doesn't mean to say we can't have a laugh. It doesn't mean to say we can't have a joke, but we, but whatever we do, in word and deed, we should do all in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some people that teach, that take this chapter and they go to an extreme and they think if you put a smile on your face or you have a laugh, you're not a Christian. No, the joy of the Lord is our strength. God wants us to have fun. He wants us to enjoy our salvation. And there is nothing wrong. That there, that there is such a thing, but we need to be careful. We need to be, make sure that what we're doing is to the honour and glory of God. For we are the light of the world and we are here to represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are ambassadors. And I hope I'm pronouncing it right this time, Sheila. Ambassadors of Christ. My wife tells me that I sometimes pronounce it wrong, and um, when if I'm pronouncing something wrong, I like, to, I like to be told, so I don't continue doing it. It says, For this you know, that no whoremonger. Now, what's a whoremonger? Well, a, wh a whoremonger is an offensive term used to refer to a sexually indiscriminate man, especially one who frequents prostitutes. Now you've got to remember, you say, this is strange, why would, why would any Christian do that anyway? 
Well, you've got to understand that Paul is writing to the Ephesian church, and they didn't have the Bible. They never had the book of, they never had the Epistle of Ephesians until Paul wrote it. They didn't have what we have today. These were people that had came out of paganism. These were the Ephesians that went to the temple of Diana. And part of the worship of these men, they would go to these pagan temples, temples, and they had these temple prostitutes. And part of the worship would be that they had sex with one of these people. So actually, from the pagan side of you, that seek going with prostitutes, having sex, was the way to worship God, their God, their pagan God. And Paul was writing and saying, no, that's not the Christian way. That may have been the pagan way, that may have been the way that you learnt in your religion, but that is not the Christian way. We are not to do, we are not to do those things. It says, for ye know, that means Paul must have told them, or someone must have told them, but they wouldn't know. He said, for you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. This idea that people say, well, you can do anything you like and still be safe, the Bible doesn't teach that. It says they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Eternal security is not the teaching that we can live in sin and get to heaven. Eternal security is a doctrine that when we are saved, we will walk like we are saved, we are took like we are saved, we are kept from sin, and we will walk in holiness and purity because it's what we call the perseverance of the saints. The true child of God will persevere in their salvation and they will endure to the end, and he that endures to the end shall be saved. They will never lose their salvation, they cannot lose their salvation. And the evidence that they are saved is the life that they are living. And let me tell you, friends, you can talk about eternal security of the believer to your blue in the face, but if you're living that kind of life, it is evidence that you need salvation, or at least you need to repent of that. And if you are a child of God, you will repent of it. And if you're not a child of God, well then you need to ask Jesus, then you need to call upon Jesus. So he says, let no man deceive you in vain words. Let nobody tell you that these things are acceptable to God. Let no one tell you that to be presumptuous in your salvation. Let no one ever tell you that, or well, God will understand. I was in the West Indies um, some time ago and I heard people use a statement and say, if that man ever does it to me, well, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do this, and God's gonna have to forgive me. That's presumptuous. This idea that you can go out and get drunk and go out and chase women, and because you say no, that is not what we believe. That, that is not what we that teach eternal security believe, and that is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible plainly says that those that do those things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The God that saved us is a holy God. And we are called to be a holy people. We are, we are called to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, the Bible says, that we should sing for praises unto him. So don't let anybody deceive you with vain words, because these things come of, come of the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Therefore be ye not partakers of them. Stay away from them. Keep clear of them. The Bible makes that clear in, 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 the, in Psalms. If I just go very quickly to the book of Psalms. And just read to you Psalms. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law 
does he meditate day and night? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Its leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not sown, but are like chaff and the wind that drive them away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So be not partakers of them. Stay away from them. Verse 8 it says, But ye were sometimes in darkness, but now ye are the children of light. Walk as children of light. Let us make up our mind today that from this moment on we are going to walk and talk and act in a, in a way that tells the world that we are the children of the living God. Don't, don't be like one of those Christians or so-called Christians that are always trying to see how close to the world they can get and still be saved. How close, what they can, how much sin they can do and still be saved. But let us be a people that pursue holiness, pursue righteousness, pursue clean living, being faithful to our wives, being good employees, being trustworthy, being holy in all manner of conversations, being holy in thought, that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. I'm going to continue this teaching next week. There's so much to be said, but I want you to read this chapter because we have read God's part in salvation. We read what God did to save us in chapter 1 and chapter 2. We read how we are saved. We read how that we are fellow heirs in Christ Jesus. And now we talk about the responsibility of the Christian to walk. To walk holy, to talk holy. Not because we are trying to earn our salvation. You can't earn it. By grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. We can't earn our salvation. Salvation is a gift. And Paul is not teaching in Ephesians chapter 5 about earning our salvation. He's talking about living the saved life. He's talking about how we that are already saved should be living. How we that are saved, we don't live holy to be saved. We do it because we are saved. We don't live right to be saved. We live right because we are saved. We are the children of God. And let us seek holiness. And stay away from people that play about with the things of God. But, get me, but stay with people that mean what they say. Say what they mean. <coughs> they don't just preach a message, they live a message. And I hope this message this week has challenged you, even as it's challenged me. Because this word is just as much for me as it is for you. It's for all of us. Thanks for joining us on the internet. Thanks for coming. Look forward to continuing this message next week. And until we meet again, this is David McKibbitt saying unto you that no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer. Thank you for listening to Evangelist David McKibbitt. If you need prayer or would like to receive a free copy of our magazine called The Great Commission, write to Full Gospel Evangelism, PO Box 24528, London, E17 3FG. That is Full Gospel Evangelism, PO Box 24528, London, E17 3FG. Eternal